Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Help keep this content ad-free by supporting us on patreon.com slash archerygeek. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Kenneth, Kenny Ken. Uh, how are you doing, buddy? So Ken Jordan is uh, a, uh, a came into my purview and, I, and uh, a good friend of ours put us together and I said, hey, I got to get this guy on the show because you have just been uh, killing it in the longbow scene uh, and now you're going to represent uh, Team USA. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. All right. This is the first time meeting. I, I'm, it, I'm pl- it's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, thank you very much for uh, coming on the show. Cause uh, man, that's a, that's a big honor. That's a huge honor. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Did you get a team shirt yet? Not yet. We got jerseys ordered. Oh my gosh, man. Putting that you, I can, I can't even imagine. I, I was going to say I can imagine, but I can't, you know, we put on that team USA shirt. And be like representing uh, Team USA. I think that's pretty cool, dude. Yeah, I don't think it's sunk in yet. I think once I get on the airplane to actually go to Italy, it'll probably start sinking in then. It's well, seriously. I, like I don't know. As soon as I unbox, if I as soon as, if I got a USA Team USA shirt in the mail, I'd be like, oh my, this stuff is real. This is real now, man. I'm like, I did something really right to be here. <laughs> you know. There's no hey there there was a lot of good shooters at that shoot, like there was yeah. no no slouches and I, I apologize if I haven't uh, really got you on my radar sooner. Um, usually I like to know who all the really good shooters are. How where have you been hiding or have you not? Uh, maybe it's just me. Was it me? Well, I don't I don't know. I don't want like put anybody out, but I don't I don't advertise myself. So you know I just I go out there to shoot and win and just do my thing you know well you are now you're like like tens of people will see this <laughs> no it's just it's nice it's nice that you came on and i really appreciate it i want to back up though i want to get into your um i want to get into your history and just i want to learn a little bit more about you quite frankly uh because you told me something just before we uh, started recording and it, it was kind of interesting about how long you've been training for can can you kind of roll into you know how did you start in traditional archery? What was your What's your history on that? Um, well, when I was like 12, I got my first compound bow, which was a bare white tail too. So it's, you know, one level up from a recurve. Mm-hmm. And I for several years. And I went to compound and then probably about 2015, I was like, you know, I'm tired of compound hunting and want a little more challenge and I'll uh, pick up a recurve and put the compound down. I just loved it. Really? No, I'm shooting longbow. Did you go, so wait, sorry, say that again. You you went from compound to recurve for a bit? Yeah, I shot recurve for probably two years. And then I started playing around with the longbow and just really, really enjoyed the longbow and started shooting that and got into the wood arrows. And that was just a frustrating mess and still is. And <laughs> <laughs> one of the best longbow shooters in the united states it's still frustrating for him and hey listen, i'm going to tell you i do reviews too um and people who watch the show know that i do reviews of bows and i tell them don't give a brand new archer a longbow and wood arrows that is just not fair i mean it's it's too hard you're like you're like saying you know uh it, the hardest part of archery go do that and make it work and not get frustrated you're just going to lose someone in traditional archery and here you are cleaning up i do have a question for you um when you were going from compound to single string now did you was that a wood recurve bow yeah it was a pse mustang i think Nah, I don't even know what that is, but, but, but I, I, it's a wood, all wood bow. So did you say to yourself, like, I want something traditional, so I got to go to wood and, or, or was it just something I, I think it's cool or. Uh, something cool. I mean, I had that for a little while. I went to Hoyt Buffalo and 
then I got my first widow, and that was just like a dream come true. My God, it! I was like, wow, this thing's awesome. And from there, especially when I shot a uh, hundred forty something inch buck with the widow, and after that, I was like, I ain't never taking a gun or nothing. So, yeah, that's pretty much I usually take my bow and gun season, and I got a flintlock. Last year, so I started taking a flintlock muzzleloader during gun season. So I just, I don't know, I just like challenges and traditional stuff. It's cool. You like doing it the hard way. You like doing yeah. it the hard way, period. Right. Like, that's funny. So, but your your longbow now, are you are you hunting with your longbow? Yeah. Oh, okay, so do you, would you call it an exclusive relationship with your longbow? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, last year I jumped into stone points, was trying to some point and i finally got mad and went back to carbonero and steelheads and killed some deer but yeah <laughs> it's a great relationship i don't know which is love or hate but hmm. so we'll talk a little let's talk a little bit about that frustration i know the boys in oklahoma would be like long bow <laughs> laminate bow Pff, you gotta have a self bow or you're not a real archer so uh, you got one step to go. You got one more step to go. I think I think you still got time to get to that self you, You're cutting out a little bit, uh, Ken. Just a little bit. Uh, yeah, the self bow is the next step. Yeah. Have you have you contacted anyone about a self bow, or you want to make one yourself? Yeah, I'd like to make one myself. That'd be cool. You got a good shop back there. What is that? What are you like a? That's pretty uh, awesome. I'm at a buddy's house because. I live over in the boonies with no service. So I'm at the Whiskey City Traditional Club's site over in Milan, Indiana. Oh, wow. That is really cool, man. That's really cool. That's nice that they let you do that. Uh, come out and use your phone once in a while. <laughs> hey, man. So, okay. What are you, um, what did you use to uh, do so well at the, the trials, the team trials? Uh, Black Widow, 66 inch PL. Okay. Okay. All right. And, um, that's a beautiful bow. That's a beautiful, you don't have it with you, do you? No, I don't. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, I'll have to put a picture up or something of that. That's a, that's a nice bow. Um, what's the weight? What's poundage? Uh, I'm pulling right at 43 and a half pounds on it at 30 inches. Okay. And that helps with those wood arrows, right? 43. You want to be up there. Anything less would be kind of. Yeah. Like 42, 43 pounds. Okay. And who's your who's making your arrows for you? Paul Jalon. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I think uh um Lee uses Paul too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I can't remember now. But anyway, so that say that again, sir. I'm cutting you off. Your your audio's cutting off, and then I, it's me talking. Wait till I'm done talking, maybe. I don't know. Go ahead, go. So he makes the best arrows, so he does. All right, we'll give him a shout out. Then I, I got no problem. And then Black Widow, you know, they're classic, right? They're just classic bow makers they're here in missouri so i got i'm kind of partial i'm in kansas but uh just around just in springfield there over there so i so nice bows nice bows you were shooting with good stuff um how often do you practice oh every day what, what does that mean every day like an hour 15 minutes it just depends i might get up before work practice for a half hour get home from work i might practice for an hour two hours just no, it just depends what's going on at the house. Right, 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 right. So I, it's not a cheap sport, hey? It's not. It's not a cheap sport when you're shooting wood arrows. I mean, oh. I imagine a guy as good as you is slapping arrows a lot, <laughs> and, and and it's it's probably a, it's probably expensive. You go through a lot of arrows. I quit shooting groups. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome dude that is the uh that is the uh, as the kids say that is the best flex that i've ever heard for an archer <laughs> like, I, got, like, I got like six 3d targets in my yard different yards and then i got probably a 25 target course throughout my woods so wow. i'll either punch foam or i'll go shoot the course and i move it around targets around and stuff and just keep it switched up well, that, I mean, train the way you're going to fight, right? Uh, they say in, in, in uh, martial arts. That is pretty cool. 25, 25 target course. Is that all 
you know, have you collected those targets over the years or are you, is that something you just said, I'm going to go out and do this and get really serious about this? Uh, a little bit of both. I mean, I started off with just the cores as the archery clubs around the house was selling the old cores. I'd buy the cores for like 10 bucks and I'd set them throughout the woods. And then, you know, I started going to IBO shoots and I'd buy a target here and target there and just finally collect them up over the last couple of years. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea to grab those cores once the deer or whatever shot out. And your core is usually pretty good for a while. That's that's the good foam. Yeah, again, from the archery clubs, and, you know, they're plenty good for guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only – you won't, see, difference is I can't just hit the, the, the insert. You know, I need the rest of the deer. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need that deer and then a buffalo behind that deer. Uh, so i make sure i hit stuff uh, so you're going to represent team Can or team usa uh sorry i'm canadian too uh, but team usa that is amazing um that you got that uh you have that honor and you got some good shooters there too with you for the for the uh the shoot there's a lot of good uh, players going to italy um and that's in september if i'm not mistaken correct yep september now, have you done anything to prepare for that? Or what are you doing to prepare for that, I should say? I mean, pretty much the same as I was preparing for the trials. You know, I'm just practicing 33 yards, 35 yards, and just keep practicing, trying to try exercise, get back in good shape. So last year my scores was up, and I think it was because I was in a lot better shape when I was getting ready for an elk hunt. So I'm going to try to get back in shape and – be ready to go yeah i love that you know i was thinking about that the, the other day i was thinking well as i was out practicing i was thinking you, you have to be in pretty good shape the people that are in really good top shape you know you can overcome some of your bad shots if you're in better shape so you don't have to be as good an archer if you're in good shape but if you're not in good shape you have to be an, an incredible archer you know what i mean so i i i, I kind of think that that's that, that's really correlated. Um, so you make it. So what would you do to get in shape? Go for hikes, runs? Uh, I got elliptical at the house. I get on a lot and, you know, I might throw 30 pounds in a pack and go hiking through the hills. And... Yeah, that's nice. Are you still doing elk? Are you still hunting elk? Or are you, Not you won't this be year. doing that this year? No, you're going to spend money to go to Italy. That's what you're going to do, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh that's expensive um you're getting some help though right you guys are getting yep. some okay good. yep lancaster donated and the single string club they had some good fun so we're getting some help yeah that's that's really good i'm i'm really really happy that you guys are getting that help uh i was there at the single string camp uh, this year in ohio that was amazing it was amazing it was an amazing time there's amazing people there uh, anyone that's not gone to the single string uh, boot camp, <clears throat> it was called the Barebo boot camp uh, two years ago, but now yeah. it's single string. So they're going to include everyone, right? Because um, that, that really sums it up a little bit better. So for the traditional guys that are shooting trad, the guys that are shooting longbow and the guys that are shooting barebow, um, that's kind of who we're supporting with that. And uh, you can still donate for anyone that hasn't donated yet. You can still donate to the single string club. Um what are you doing? Are you running any fundraisers for yourself to get a, a few bucks? I know some my, people are. My buddy started to go fund me and uh, another guy, he's raffling off a pistol. So got a few little things going. Can you get me that information and I'll put it here so that people listen to this can go there and make sure that I have the, the links and stuff like that. So um, if they're listening to this, go, you know, every little bit helps, right? 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, uh, $3,000 would be great. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm talking, I'm talking to you, black widow. <laughs> this is a man who's shooting, who's, who's representing our country, the United States of America. It's, it's not, um, it's fundamentally, uh, a sound to, to back you, uh, black widow should have you as their, picture your poster boy on on their pictures uh, of uh, shooting so um but that that would be good that'd be good if we get some sponsorship that would be awesome for you get you over there shouldn't have to pay for that if you're representing your country at least that's how i feel anyway uh anyway so uh getting back to you so you you're shooting uh wood arrows you're shooting a longbow 
um, PSA, you're shooting, um, you're shooting. I want to talk a little bit about the longbow class though. Cause I just heard you say 33 yards and I was like, I, I don't know. I, what is the longbow class it, to get into the longbow class in, in competition? What do you have to do? What's the criteria? Around here is just a one or two piece longbow wood arrows. The max yardage is 25 yards and IBO and most places you go to. Okay. But you think you're going to be shooting longer in Italy, farther away? Yeah. The world archery is 33 or 30 meters. So 33 yards. Okay. All right. Oof. That's rough. You got any small targets at your house? Yeah. Yeah. I got some coons and crows and some small stuff. Uh, yeah. And, but no problem, eh? At the longer distance? No, just you really got to know your yarders because them wood arrows for me, you get past 28 yards and they, they drop like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like. When you said 33 yards, I was like, oh, my God, on wood arrows. They got to make thinner, lighter wood arrows. How do they do that? It's not possible, is it? No, they got five sixteenths, but I think the heaviest spine for them is like 45 pounds. I got some from Paul that were 49-pound spine. And with my draw, though, I'd have to shoot like a 30-pound bow to be able to effectively shoot them. Yeah, I don't get that. I don't get the <clears throat> the measurement of wood arrows. Like I, I, don't, I don't get it. Do you, you don't either? <laughs> I just buy all kinds of splines and cut them and shoot them. and <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, works, right? <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, I would... <laughs> I can't believe you're representing this country. You're supposed to know more than that. You're, just, you're supposed to be the expert. Oh, <laughs> Jeez. Hey, uh, give us some advice. Give us some advice if someone wants to get into a longbow, shooting a longbow. Go spend two years on compound first? or uh, No. I don't know. I would say just find another longbow shooter in your area and you know, watch them and try to see what they do. I mean... I don't know. I got lucky and I got serious into it last year in IBO and, you know, Randy Irvine, he, he really helped me out and yeah, uh, Smock really helped me out. Just how you just got to talk to the experienced guys and get some information because it's, I don't know if you ever be able to figure it out on your own and you go to listen to Facebook and everything on the internet and there's so much information just make it explode. If you try to, figure it all out like that well you got a good friend in calvin smock i'm sure and uh you know anyone you you got to lean on those guys that have international experience now and he's he's one of them right oh. so man use use that resource for sure <laughs> calvin get calvin on the phone as much as you can um yeah are you guys going to have any trials together are you guys going to have any sort of training where the team gets together I don't believe so. I know they asked if we was all who all is going to be at Trad Worlds, so I'm sure we'll get together there. But other than that, ain't nothing I know of. Right? Are you going down to Trad World? Oh yeah. Okay, and that's when is that? August. By uh, 21st to 24th, I think. Okay, July 21st, 24th. Okay, all right. So yeah, that there's a good one too for you to to kick butt at too. That's uh went on the hunter's course and then uh, go and clean up on the other one. And uh, who's your, uh, Josh is your, your biggest competition or who's your biggest competition? Um, I mean, the IBO is Trevor Fielder. He's the biggest yeah. competition this year. Yeah. So. He's usually up there right near the top. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, cool, man. Uh, what, uh, if people want to get hold of you and chat with you and say hi and follow you, uh, where can they do that? Uh, it's Facebook. It's just on Facebook. What's your name yeah. on Facebook? What, who are you on Facebook? Jordan. Kenny Jordan. All right. Ken, Kenneth. Yeah. Oh, Kenneth Jordan. Yep. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about before we uh, we uh, call it? Uh, I don't guess so. Unless any, any, any shout outs, any any sponsors or anyone that you need to, to say hi to? Yeah, I really got no sponsors, so. What? We got to fix that. We're going to do something after this. You get someone call you up and, and work through that. It's just you're, you're, you, 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 uh, you just keep quiet and you just shoot good. Is that it? I just, I don't know. I just, I find something I enjoy and I, 
I dive into 110% and that's pretty much what I do with archery. You know what? I'm going to put you on spot a little bit before we go. Um, tell us, talk me through your shot process. Uh, hold on to the tractor going by. I can't hear you. <laughs> there was some other background noise. Did nothing. Uh, but this is, that's so, I mean, this is so trad right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing more trad. A tractor's going by. Can you hold on for one second? <laughs> Let me get my. I had a little bit of chew. I gotta get. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Man, it's nice. It was good. It's good meeting you. Uh, I'm glad we got the chance to talk. But hey, I'm still putting you on spot. I need to hear your shot process. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I keep it simple. You know, I walk up to the stake, and before I do anything, I try to find ten yards. And I'll try to find 15 yards and, you know, I'll go from there in five yard increments. And I just pretty much, I draw straight back, hit my anchor and, you know, I just follow through with my shot. And I'm not a, uh, I'm like a gap stinkive shooter. I don't know my exact gapping. You know, I just know, I know my sight picture between my arrow tip and the target at what yardage I'm shooting. and. I just roll with it. Yeah, it's good, man. That's good. That that I, that's a lot of hope. I mean, it sounds not as technical as you know a lot of other people's shot process, right? And I think uh, one of the biggest barriers to getting into traditional archery is that people don't know how to aim, you know, and they don't get it right, and they don't understand, you know, the difference between instinctive and you know hard aiming and gap shooting. All those things are really, really tough. I don't, did you originally start off as a, a gap shooter or just instinctive? No. Yeah. Sorry, did you, uh, do you need a second? I don't know where he's at. He's out bow shoot. He's at a bow shoot. I didn't hear. He's at a bow shoot. No, Dave's at a bow shoot. Oh, is he? Yeah. Fucking hearing gauge went dead. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's hilarious, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've, I've tried having multiple steps in my process, and just the more I think about stuff, the more I screw up. So I just try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, I got I got three points of contact on my anchor, and that's really all I focus on. I just focus on my back tension. Okay, good. What are those points? Where are you drawn to? I got my knuckle on my earlobe, yep. corner of my mouth, and the side of my nose touches the side of the arrow. Oh, great. That is, that's, that's fantastic. Three points. That's good. The more you can get on there and the more consistent, that gives you just a much better consistent shot. So that's really cool. And then you, you're, you just know your arrows, I guess. You know the way of your arrows. That you, for you guys, for you particularly, going out to 30 yards, like you were saying, you have to understand the gap. But, I mean, that the arrow, you got to understand how the arrow flies. Yeah. Like, you don't have – you're not like bearbow. Like, I'm a bearbow guy, and now I've, done, I've gone to uh, 3D HVs, and I have, like, two crawls, three crawls to 33 yards. You know what I mean? It's like – you're not doing too much movement there because it's just so flat up to 33 yards. So, you know, like Jared Mullis's bear bow with his arrows, and yeah. it's like like little laser beams. I mean, 30 yards, you can still see 11 with a point on. It's like that's not fair at all. No, it's <laughs> true. I mean, you know, Jared, like seriously, I shot with Jared. And he he was on the show, and we we had a really good show. Jared and I we got to walk the course at the single string, um, and then we we're doing the shooting. Yeah, he's shooting like 50 pound with really light arrows. And he basically doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just put your point on no matter 20 yards or this is flat. So just go zoom so fast. I don't, I don't have that kind of control, but he's, he's in control. He seems to be in control, but he's been doing really well too. So, but uh, anyway, okay. So uh, people can reach you on Facebook, uh, Kenneth Jordan. And uh, again, man, thanks for stopping by and taking time. And, you know, I'm wishing you all the best. Seriously, I'll, I'll, 
Now, I won't be at the IBO traditional uh, shoot, but I'll I'll be watching the scores. So I'll be cheering you on, man. So uh, good luck over there. And uh, I hope you uh, crush it. And I hope you represent the U.S. really well when you get over to Italy, too. Plan on it. Just you are. Shoot. Just another shoot. Is that what you just said? Or shoot. You think too much and you just get inside your head. I'm trying to give you a little pressure. To get... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thanks so much. I appreciate you. Anyway, um, guys, don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com. Um, don't forget that we're running a Patreon now. If you like this content, it's like two bucks a month. So go help us out on that as well. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot. It's just two bucks. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, again, Ken, thanks for uh, joining us today. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hunt the good stuff. Thanks.